live from Washington, D.C., Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, your host, Jordan Seculo. Welcome to Jay Seculo Live. This is Jordan Seculo. We are taking your phone calls at 1 800 684 3110. Talking about the situation involving Hoda uh, Mutana, who is the 24 year old who wants to return to the U.S. Uh, she is an ISIS bride, uh, has a child uh, with one of the ISIS fighters who was killed. She's had three husbands that were part of ISIS uh, in Syria. A third, it appears. Uh, two were killed, and then the third uh, was, uh, she says, describes as divorce. Uh, I'm not sure exactly uh, what to believe in this situation when it in- involves her. Uh, she alone is someone who, the, the question is, uh, that, and it's been put forward by the State Department Secretary of State Pompeo, that she is not a U.S. citizen, that she was born to a uh, father uh, who was whose family was here under status as diplomats, from Yemen, and if you're born here as with status, a diplomatic status, as your reason for being here, that doesn't mean you couldn't get a passport. By the way, um, if you you know, because if you were born in the U.S., but you do not get birthright citizenship because you are here serving your your country overseas. Kind of the the, the flip side of that would be how our military men and women, when they are serving overseas, and to children are born at military bases in foreign countries, they are seen as receiving immediate. Uh, U.S. Uh, birthright citizenship, even though they're outside that country, uh, they're outside the United States uh, territory. Uh, so it's it's again a flip side there. The family is arguing, well, he left the diplomatic job a month before she was born, but the only legal reason they had status here was because of his diplomatic status. Um, so whether or not uh, if he was still here on that visa with that diplomatic passport, uh, you wouldn't have changed. You know, he didn't get a. Uh, there's no report that he got like a tourist visa or, or a new kind of visa that that overrode uh, his diplomatic passport. Uh, and and what is even more interesting, we get into her, but who is defending her? Who is her lawyer? You may have seen him on TV, even on on. Uh, I think he was on Fox News. Her lawyer is someone named Hassan Shibley. Well, Hassan Shibley is the head of CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations in Florida. Here's some statements he's made. Now, this is the ISIS Brides American lawyer. Let's take a listen to some of his tweets. Uh, you can go to at Hassan Shibley to read them for yourself to know uh, this is totally legit. Uh, here's one. Isn't it ironic how Hamas with crude weapons kills mostly soldiers while Israel with pinpoint weapons kills mostly civilians? It's not even true. Hamas uh, uh, targets civilian areas and, and does not target military areas. God is my witness. Israel and its supporters are enemies of God and humanity. That includes all of you folks. If you're a supporter of Israel, you're an enemy of God and humanity. Uh, May we not uh, be written amongst those God rights as having done nothing while our tax dollars empower Israel to kill the children of Gaza. Israel's killed more children than, than Hamas. This one, if we kill 484 civilians trying to kill ISIS be, because ISIS kills civilians, what does that make us? So comparing U.S. military to ISIS. Folks, as we're heading into a break right now, we have a matching challenge at the ACLJ. Whatever you donate is doubled. For an example, a $15 donation ends up becoming a $30 donation to the ACLJ. You can be part of that matching challenge by donating online at aclj.org or calling the number on your screen. So you can call that number on your screen right now and be part of the matching challenge or go easily to aclj.org and have the your donation, the impact of your donation be doubled. It's our matching challenge, a great time to support the work of the ACLJ. Go to aclj.org. We'll be right back. It is a critical time for our nation, and the American Center for Law and Justice is on the front lines, defending life and liberty, engaging the issues that matter most to you and your family. Whether it's working to protect Americans from the dangers of radical Islam and the persecution of Christians, to defending life at the U.S. Supreme Court, to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms, we could not do this work without you, without your support. 
And now your support can really make a tremendous difference. For a limited time, you can participate in the ACLJ Matching Challenge. If you make a gift now, it will be doubled. $25 becomes $50. A $100 gift becomes $200. Please stand with the ACLJ right now and call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or go online at aclj.org. Thank you for your support. His name is Hassan Shibley. He is the head of Care Florida, and now he is the lawyer for the ISIS, American ISIS bride, a so-called American, by the way, because there's a dispute over whether she is even a citizen. Now, to our government, there is no dispute. She was born under diplomatic uh, uh, protections as a diplomatic visa, uh, a diplomatic passport, that her father was a diplomat from Yemen, and even though he may have left that position, um, if you if you were legally here for that reason, in our laws, it's clear you're not a U.S. citizen if you're born here uh, to diplomatic parents, uh, and if that's the reason for being here. Uh, so there's that issue. Secretary of State Pompeo made it very clear. His statement was this. Miss Hoda Mutana is not a U.S. citizen and will not be admitted to the U.S. She does not have any legal basis, no valid passport, no right to a passport, nor any visa to travel to the United States. We continue to strongly advise all U.S. citizens not to to travel to Syria. And if she was allowed back here, I mean, she would likely be charged with treason, maybe heading into Guantanamo Bay. That's not unprecedented. Let's say she argues she is an American. Well, uh, so, you know, we've had uh, uh, those that kind of imprisonment uh, uh, before. Um, and, and during that legal battle, she could end up in Gitmo. She could end up with, uh, again, it, I think a minimum life in prison. So, uh, yes, she has a child. People trying to pull the heartstrings there. Would you want that child being raised by someone who had the good sense to go and join ISIS? Who left America to go and join ISIS? I say that sarcastically. Uh, uh, this is not someone probably should be raising that child. And and again, she's, she's making the decision. If she wants to come back here, she's got to know and understand that means she'd be giving up uh, raising her child. So uh, first to uh, for to Andy, Andy Economo. I mean, Andy, this, again, we, we look at Hassan Shibley, her, her lawyer statements that we're all enemies of God and we're enemies of, of humanity if we're pro-Israel. And her statement, go kill all of us. Yeah, this is a person who is uh, a despicable anti-American uh, traitor. If, even if uh, her actions now, she's repented of them. God knows what she did over there, what executions she witnessed, probably did, participated in, aided and abetted. She's had three husbands, all of whom have been jihadists and terrorists. She's had a child by one of them. I don't blame the child, and I don't ascribe any of the sins of the parents to the children. But as you said, that child should not be raised by a woman of this uh, this nature and this kind of person. And the president uh, and, and Mike Pompeo, the secretary of state, have done the correct things in refusing access of her back to the United States. If she does come back here, I think she should be in prison in Guantanamo, should be tried as a traitor. But this is a despicable thing to say. Go on drive-bys kill and spill all of their blood. This is the kind of person who wants to come back to the United States, and we are. And there are those who advocate that she should, I say, never. And realize that this is an individual who's being represented by the Council on American Islamic Relations, their executive director in Florida, Hassan Shibley, who's put out, not as direct, not saying to go and kill the people, but calling us all enemies of God and humanity. So what's the next, what do you do with enemies of God and humanity under Islam? Probably what uh, uh, Mother Jihad tweeted out, which is Hoda's, uh, 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 Hoda Mutana, this uh, uh, ISIS bride, that was her Twitter handle. You go on drive-bys and spill all their blood, or you rent a big truck and drive all over them. I mean, that's what you, uh, that West, that's the, it, it's, it, the rhetoric flows. It goes, okay, these people are enemies of God. They are enemies of humanity itself. So if you even support Israel, then what flows from that? The next step is you've got, you know, enemies are bad. Yeah, and you kill them, according to ISIS. Yeah. And she is a devotee to ISIS. I think it's interesting that the tweet you read, Jordan, is not her only tweet. There are four years worth of tweets by this young woman as an ISIS bride. She says she did witness atrocities and executions, you know, uh, committed by ISIS. 
I think it's interesting that she suddenly developed a conscience and wants to repent and come home as ISIS has lost all of their territory. Tens of thousands of them have been killed. There is no caliphate. And so now suddenly, because there is no other place to go, she wants to come back home. Uh, I think her, her repentance is quite convenient. I, I don't believe it's sincere. You never know what's in a person's heart. Even if it were sincere, uh, her actions fit the very definition of what treason is. And if she comes back, she has to be held accountable. The other thing concerning her passport, if, if it was granted to her uh, mistakenly or under false pretenses because her dad was still under his diplomatic um, you know, cover here as a citizen of Yemen, that means that that passport can be declared not valid even if she had one. Even if she's an American citizen, uh, the U.S. government is under no obligation to facilitate transportation of a U.S. citizen back home. Uh, if she is indeed you know, a citizen, if it has to be adjudicated, uh, they would have to deal with her if she showed up at, at customs at the airport or at the border. But we are under no obligation to facilitate her travel back to the United States. And quite frankly, I don't think she should be allowed to come back to the United States. Take a listen to her attorney, Hassan Shibley, trying to defend his client. This is the head of care. Take a listen uh, to his sound trying to defend uh, uh, this ISIS bride. It's difficult to know what exactly she did at this point while she was in Syria because she didn't have complete control over her social media. And I think what's mind boggling right now is that the New York Times, The Guardian and uh, ABC News have all been able to interview her on the ground her side of the story and they've all found her very very genuine in her tremendous remorse they found that she was very naive i mean she's 24 years old she we know she witnessed the executions she put out the propaganda for people to kill she may not like the situation the, the caliphate's fallen i mean it's it's kind of interesting timing harry uh the attorney leaves that part out that she's doing this because there's no more caliphate i think you're precisely accurate Remorse is not good enough, in my opinion. No. Hoda was an opportunist uh, who wants to come home after ISIS lost its caliphate. Yeah. I think that's the bottom line. Folks, as we're heading into a break right now, we have a matching challenge at the ACLJ. Whatever you donate is doubled. For an example, a $15 donation ends up becoming a $30 donation to the ACLJ. You can be part of that matching challenge by donating online at aclj.org or calling the number on your screen. So you can call that number on your screen right now and be part of the matching challenge or go easily to aclj.org and have the your donation, the impact of your donation, be doubled. It's our matching challenge, a great time to support the work of the ACLJ. Go to aclj.org. We'll be right back. It is a critical time for our nation, and the American Center for Law and Justice is on the front lines, defending life and liberty, engaging the issues that matter most to you and your family. Whether it's working to protect Americans from the dangers of radical Islam and the persecution of Christians, to defending life at the U.S. Supreme Court, to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms, we could not do this work without you, without your support. And now your support can really make a tremendous difference. For a limited time, you can participate in the ACLJ Matching Challenge. If you make a gift now, it will be doubled. $25 becomes $50. A $100 gift becomes $200. Please stand with the ACLJ right now and call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or go online at aclj.org. Thank you for your support. I was at a board meeting at Jews for Jesus, and the executive director said, we've got a case. The Supreme Court had just granted review. It was about literature distribution at airports. We wanted to have the Bible study meet in the school, but it turned into a problem when the principal said, no, you can't have it. I told her that I wanted to sing Noel, and the principal said that we can't have anything to do with Christ in our songs. We marched around the country defending evangelism in Chicago, in Boston, in New York, Atlanta, Texas, Southern California, Northern California, and points in between. The IRS is expected to reveal the results of an internal investigation that shows the agency targeted conservative groups. This was a complete misuse of the Office of the Internal Revenue Service. We only persevered because the ACLJ was there. The federal courts do not need to become monitors of state trespass actions, and that's all this is. We were looking 
for the right to speak our minds and our consciences, and we won that right today. Those of us that believe in life know that we're on the right side of history. We understand full well children are children, and they're precious in God's sight, and they're precious in our nation's sight, and they're precious to parents. Religious persecution is a situation where your life is literally put in jeopardy simply because of what you believe. Can you help? Can you do something? He's on death row, and so we launched an international campaign. If we don't use that freedom to advocate for these people suffering under religious persecution, who will? His name is Hassan Shibley. He is the head of the Council of American Islamic Relations. We went through some of his tweets about how anybody who supports Israel is an enemy of God and humanity. Also a tweet comparing ISIS killing civilians to the U.S. military trying to f defeat ISIS and America so that we're the same as ISIS. Um, he is also now the lawyer for the ISIS bride. This is what he's had to say about recognized terrorist organizations by Europe and the United States. Um, he, uh, Although the U.S. and Israel and EU view Hezbollah as a terrorist group, Shibley insists they are a legitimate military group that conducts justified operations. Hezbollah is basically a resistance movement, this is a quote, uh, supported by people in Lebanon and is not merely a military institution, provides a lot of social services for people. They are absolutely not terrorist or not a terrorist organization their targets have always been military targets they wear uniforms and operate overtly and so under american law since they have a political party and support from people any war against them is illegitimate i mean you could go to war with people with a political party it's uh, pretty clear in our history the nazis had a political party and uniforms um i mean they and we went to a just war with them so I, I, again this idea of, see, if we don't hide, we're not terrorists, and so if we put on a uniform, you can't go after us, but we can do whatever we want. I mean, Wes, uh, you've been diving into care, and I want to explain it to people because, listen, we have new audience all the time, and it's been some time since we've really focused in on this organization. You've done uh, the research to kind of explain to people who this organization, what they are all about at their core. Yeah, they were founded in 1993 in Philadelphia by leaders of what is now the defunct Islamic Association for Palestine. Uh, they basically, uh, there have been calls to to classify CARE as a terrorist organization. They basically, in my opinion, are a ter terrorist organization cloaked as a civil rights organization. That, that's what they say they are. But you look at their history and their record, who their founders were, you look at the fact that the United Arab Emirates and other Gulf states in the Middle East have all declared, get this, CARE, not the Muslim Brotherhood itself, but CARE as a terrorist organization. I mean, the, the Arabs in the Gulf think that CARE is a terrorist group. And of course, in America, basically, they're a front for the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, they espouse violence and jihad. They, uh, they are a group that supports Hezbollah and Hamas and defends them. You look at some of the history uh, of CARE, and it's really pretty shocking. At a 2014 rally in Miami, Florida, where this attorney is their executive director, the crowd is chanting over and over, we are Hamas, we are Hamas. Seven, seven CARE board members or staff people have either been arrested denied entry to the U.S. or either have been indicted or pled guilty to various terrorist charges. In 2007, Kerr was an unindicted co-conspirator in the trial for the Holy Land Foundation, and uh, they were actually raising money for Hamas. After 9-11, and this is so shocking, Kerr actually was raising money after 9-11, using the attacks to raise money for the Holy Land Foundation. I mean, this is a group that has ties not only to the Muslim Brotherhood, but to international terrorist organizations. I think they should be classified as a terrorist organization as well. 
you look at some of their literature back when they were called the Islamic Association for Palestine, one of their quotes from their Arab language magazine was, the call for jihad in the name of Allah is the only path for the liberation of Palestine and all Muslim lands. Several years ago, there was a, a Arab guy, uh, Nihad Khalifa, who wrote a book exposing some of the, the radical parts of Islam. Uh, he was declared an infidel by a group of religious scholars in Mecca. He was assassinated in the state of Arizona. Care to this day has refused to condemn that assassination. The list could go on and on. They are not a legitimate group that promotes civil rights. If anything, their record and the record of their forebear, the Islamic Association for Palestine, they are the perpetrator of violence and the violation of civil rights. Gina is calling in from Florida online too. Gina, welcome to J. Secchio Live. You're on the air. Hi. Hi, Gina. Hi, thank you for taking my call. I'm so glad you're running this story because mainstream media will never do it. Um, I would like to share my opinion. This uh, CARE representative and this woman, they're entitled to their opinion. They should go and settle in Hamas country or any other place, but not in our beloved state of America, who was founded as a Judeo-Christian nation and remains so till this day, contrary to popular belief. And as an American citizen, I take great offense that the, this rhetoric, this hatred rhetoric is spewed in the name of free speech. But heaven forbid, uh, we should come against that and say, this is our country. We don't accept those values. We support and stand by Israel, and we always will. Because then that, is, that statement is called hate crime. How can this clown come in here and make that statement with this terrorist and try to get her back into our country? Well, here's what he says. This is uh, uh, Hassan Shibley. Here he is on CNN talking to Jim uh, Shudo about um, what he thinks she did in Syria. And that Twitter alone, by the way, even this in this statement that you're about to hear, like the statements on Twitter alone to go and kill people, like, they, like that's not enough. Like that's fine to do and you can still come back in your remorse. But take a listen, bite 12. Did she provide support for acts of terrorism uh, as far as we that know, she ISIS did not. carried out far, while she was there? As far as we know, she did not. But this Sunday, I actually called the FBI and I told them that, you know, the media is out there interviewing her. I think you owe it to this country that you go and you interview her. You see what law she's broken. You see if she's a threat. Do your job. Go interview this American and they've refused to do so. So that's really mind boggling. I mean, one, you can argue that she's not an American, but two, uh, Andy, right off the top there, uh, he is an attorney, but obviously doesn't understand what aiding and abetting a terrorist is because yeah. providing them shelter, being their wife, providing them food, having their children, taking care of the home while they're out in the uh, uh, out waging terrorist attacks, right. uh, that is aiding and abetting terror. It is aiding and abetting, and it's being a principal in the commission of, of yeah, terrorism I mean, and acts of terrorism. I mean, to say, as she did, go on drive-bys and spill all their blood, rent a big truck, drive all over them, veterans, patriot, Memorial Day parades, go on drive-bys, spill or their blood, or rent a big truck and drive all over them, kill them. If those are not acts of terrorism, and as you say, going over there marrying three times one of their fighters having their children participating in and and witnessing and aiding and abetting because that's what you do when you witness and you support executions i mean all these things d de- in my view don't give her the right to come back into the united states and one thing is for sure she is not an american and we need to say that loud and clear she does not have u.s citizenship she is not an american in my view she's not welcome back in this country and you look at her her social media platforms where she was calling for violence and for killing americans and all the other things it's not like she stopped this two years ago or three years ago as recently as a few months ago her social media still contained these kinds of things. The caliph is defeated, and now suddenly, you know, she wants to repent and come home. It should be no surprise, though, Jordan, to our listeners, that her attorney is the executive director and a leader for CARE Florida, because CARE really is a terrorist organization cloaked as a civil rights group. And you look at some of their propaganda and you look at some of the statements from her attorney. Her attorney in an interview recently said that Hamas and Hezbollah, they are not terrorist groups, even though the U.S. says they are, that they are resistance movements. These are groups that call not only for the destruction of Israel, 
Hezbollah and Hamas have called for the overthrow of the United States. But according to her attorney, they are not terrorist groups. They are resistance fighters. So the, the philosophy, while ISIS is much more openly violent and radical, some of the principles of the philosophy of care actually match those of various international terrorist groups and align somewhat with uh, the views of this young lady, although they would not come out and promote violence in the same way. Uh, Harry, this idea that, you know, her Twitter account may have been taken over. She was a, a voluntarily there. She voluntarily joined the Islamic State. That's it. Case closed. I think you're absolutely correct. So the focus on Hoda's Twitter account and whether it was captured by a third party is a non sequitur. Uh, it, it is clear beyond question that there is no evidence that Hoda Mutana, the ISIS bride, was kidnapped by ISIS and forced to get on a plane and go to Syria. She volunteered to board that plane. She joined ISIS. That, without more, establishes beyond question that she gave aid and comfort to our enemies. In addition to her various social media statements, Remorse is not a defense. Remorse is not a defense to boarding a plane. Remorse is not a defense to joining ISIS. And so her lawyer is offering a defense which is grounded in an illusion, in my opinion. As we close out the show today, folks, let me encourage you to support the work of the American Center for Law and Justice by donating to the ACLJ. This is a great time to donate. Why? Because it's our matching challenge. That means this month, whatever you donate is doubled. So a $20 donation to the ACLJ becomes a $40 donation, and every donation is doubled. So a $5 donation becomes $10. You're only charged that $5, and it becomes $10, or $20, that becomes $40. You're charged $20. That's at aclj.org or by calling the number that's on your screen. So either way, you can be part of the matching challenge and have the impact of your donation doubled. So double the impact of your gift. Either call the number on your screen now or make your donation online at aclj.org. We'll talk to you next time. It is a critical time for our nation. And the American Center for Law and Justice is on the front lines defending life and liberty engaging the issues that matter most to you and your family. Whether it's working to protect Americans from the dangers of radical Islam and the persecution of Christians, to defending life at the U.S. Supreme Court, to protecting your religious and constitutional freedoms, we could not do this work without you, without your support. And now your support can really make a tremendous difference. For a limited time, you can participate in the ACLJ Matching Challenge, If you make a gift now, it will be doubled. $25 becomes $50. A $100 gift becomes $200. Please stand with the ACLJ right now and call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or go online at aclj.org. Thank you for your support. 